and we're live. Hello, hello. Pull you guys up on my iPad. Good to see you, Barb and Kelly. Hi. Another Barb, Barb numero dos. Hello, toot toot. So Toot Toot, is that a nickname? Is that your name? I mean, I think it's cool, but just curious. Milagros, how is Puerto Rico? Milagros has a bird that she calls the hate bird because the bird likes to bite. <laughs> but I love Milagros's hate bird. I don't know why. I just think, I think she's great. You stick your finger near her cage and she wants to chomp at you. But really, I think she's just, I think that's the way she loves. <laughs> so, Milagros, you got to give the hate bird a love for me. Hey, everybody. This topic, I, I feel like I've covered, haven't I? But if I haven't, it, you know, <laughs> it's a repeat. Um... It is, the principles for masks are pretty much identical to the principles for the chipboard shapes. So if you wanna go back, solicito. So I wanna go, if you want to go back and review the chipboard shape video, everything there can be done here. It's the name your granddaughter gave me. <laughs> toot toot, I love that. Um, so also, uh, I had another point. <laughs> I've already lost it. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I totally fly by the seat of my pants for all this stuff. Hi, Curdy. So, <laughs> Milagros is never going to get uh, rid of me, especially now that I love the hay bird and the dogs and the cookies. It's so much fun in Puerto Rico last year. Truly, truly a great time. It was so cool. So anywho, so these principles are apply to any mask and I know you guys kind of know what to do with it, but the kitty mask, I haven't used that in ages and Maria re requested the kitty mask. So I thought, hey, that might be fun. Uh, and we can play with that. And then somebody else requested the butterfly mask, which I can't find. <laughs> Shocker. So I have no idea where the butterfly mask is because my supreme organizational skills just for some reason don't have that. There is buddy, uh, butterfly chipboard, however. So, you know, just go back to the chipboard board videos. Those sugar cookie bars are so good. Oh my gosh. They are so, so, so good. Hey, welcome everybody. So Arizona this week, at the end of the week, is due to get up to 100 degrees. 100 degrees Fahrenheit, a little behind the time. I mean, usually we're hotter now, but yeah, we're finally getting caught up to what we normally are. So I made, um, I made bread yesterday and managed to burn it. <laughs> but you know, a little burnt bread, you put butter on it, softens it up, it's fine. <laughs> so fly by the seat of my, you didn't notice? Wow, shocker. I know, I, I know I come across so organized. Oh, heaven help me, you guys. Okay, masks, masks, masks. So as I was flipping through this journal yesterday, I saw a couple of tags that I had done with the kitty mask. And so this was just a simple one. I, this one, I just love the way it turned out. I mean, there's nothing more than gloss spray and some speckles. But gosh, I just, I don't know, I never added a quote. I never did anything else to that. I just loved it. This, is this the journal? This is the journal where a lot of the samples from the trade show, um, I, I stuck a lot of them in here, which is why you see a lot of just stapling stuff because these were all on the boards at the trade show. And I come home with piles and piles of samples. So I just thought it'd be fun to put them in here. So anyway, let's play with that kitty mask a little bit. Send some heat to Michigan. I know. Hey, listen, I grew up, Linda, you got, you and Caprice remember this, but I um, grew up in Michigan. Well, I, I was born in Utah, moved to California as just a little, little kid. I have a very few 
Um, Adana, no, this is not the one I stapled on the page yesterday. I have a very few memories of California, but not a lot. And then we moved to Michigan, Midland, and then we were there for a few years. And then we moved to Ohio, and I was there for a few years. And then to England, we were there for three years. And then we moved back to Michigan, where I graduated from high school. So I definitely remember Michigan weather. And it is a beautiful, Michigan is a beautiful state, but the price you pay is a very cold winter. <laughs> And a wet spring, so I understand uh, feeling that uh, feeling in Michigan when you're just so ready for it to be warm. I can't imagine it still snowing. I'll never forget driving home from went to BYU, driving home from BYU one year, and the guys that were driving me home, one of them wanted to stop off in Kansas City, so we were driving I-70 across the country so that he could stop off in Kansas City and uh, see a girl that he was interested in. Oh, Mount Pleasant. Yeah, been there many times. And so, no, not military. My dad worked for Dow Chemical. So when you worked for Dow Chemical back in the day, you got transferred around a lot. So we, on our way through I-70, you go over the Rockies, right? And so the very, so the school would get out in, I think the very, very, very end of April, um, going into May and going to over the Rockies, we there was such a bad snowstorm, the car broke down, and we had to be hauled off on a flatbed, <laughs> and we're stuck. So, I mean, oh my gosh, yeah. the yeah, that, It's always depressing that time of year. Yeah, Michigan is, is a beautiful state. Michigan has something we don't have here in Arizona, and that is green. Uh, do you know of a store that sells all of your paints in a set? I don't know. Um... But if any of store owners are hanging out, watching, if you want to pop in and mention that, um, that would be good. Yeah, summer here is great, but then winter here is, or excuse me, summer here is misery, but winter is fantastic. And we've had a really nice spring as well. So no complaints there. All right, kitty. So one of the reasons the why it was important for me to make sure that you had the positive and the negative of the kitty mask. And by the way, this is my cat Zelda. Um, I took I took a photo of her and then played around with it. So that was, that's, this is Zelda. And it's nice because then you, you can do the, the head shape one color and then you can lay the mask down and kind of match it up if you want. So we'll just play with it a little bit. So let's, I'm opening up journals to find pages I've previously thrown stuff on, which is kind of fun. And I'm going to use a mini blending tool. Again, anytime I'm using a mask, as far as that's made out of stencil material, I think a mini blending tool is the way to go. If you're using the chipboard shapes, then the mini blending tool doesn't really work to get up to the, the edges, the relief of that shape. So definitely a mini blending tool gal when it comes to masks really helps it helps prevent that user error. Yeah. Our our first two kittens, Ajin and Zelda, they're I think they're four. And then Titan is one. So by using the stencil bit first I can make my head a little color let's do mommy and a baby and no they don't have bodies but you know you can you can draw a body you moved away you moved away or you were born in midland no way yeah i went in midland michigan i went through k through third grade there and then 10th 11th and 12th and then after i graduated from high school i moved away i went to school college in utah but my family remained there for many many years my dad eventually retired from Dow. But Dow Chemical, back in the day, they just uh, transferred you a lot. I mean, everybody in my high school had lived overseas. Everybody. I mean, you, you might say, oh, I lived in England. Nobody gave a rip because half the kids there had lived in Zurich. And, you know, all these other places. It was just, it was, it was a, you know, it's not your typical Michigan environment. That's for sure. Uh... All right, let's see. When I say Michigan, I mean diverse. <laughs> Michigan, uh, Midland at the time was pretty 
not 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 known for its diversity. I don't know how it is now, but all right. So now what I'm doing is oh that has that that color has high brown potential. Maybe I won't do blackberry. Let's see. Let's do lapis. Lapis. Oh, Dow Gardens are lovely. Lovely, lovely. So in Midland, yeah. And did you, yeah, Dow Gardens are, so it is a beautiful park. That's where everybody would go and have their prom pictures taken. Dow Gardens was the place to do it. Probably still is. All right, so once I've got the cat head done through the stencil bit, now I'm going to do the mask bit. So I'm not going to paint around the entire mask this time. I'm just going to do the features of the kitty. Some of them are a little small, so you have to work it into the stencil to make sure they show up. If you move it and it's, it hasn't shown up, then what do you do? Put it back and do it again. No big whoop. Right? Oh, that was a user error right there, eh? So don't load too much paint like I did on your blending foam. And then you won't get quite so many boogers. I got a lot of boogers. That cat has a disease, poor baby. We're just gonna rescue it and love it anyway. So when you have these, these bold shapes, you can decide, is this gonna be your focal point or is this background? And it's, you can do either. You can make this uh, background or focal point depending on the colors that you choose, like right now, these are really popping off the page. So I would say these are more focal point. Wouldn't you say that as well? But if I would have done them in more muted colors, especially colors that were similar to that background, really it's the green that's making it pop, right? Then it would have been more background. So it's totally up to you how you want to work it. And then I'm going to come back. I and just like you know, if you if you're bad at stenciling, which I am, <laughs> uh, if you come back with a pen, then everything is fixed. And what that's one of the things I love, love, love about um, stenciling is that if I'm a bad stenciler, I, I truly don't worry about it. If paint seeps under, I say my favorite words. Remember what are they? Oops. Oh well. Because if you outline where the stencil should have gone and not where it actually ended up, you'll find that it doesn't matter. Like this one here. See how the poor baby has a weird blobby nose? Okay. Well, I'm going to put the blob or, you know, put the lines in that I managed to miss. Oh, look, he looks better already. Right? No big deal. Um, white pen would have been good. I just did the food ball because I know this paint is still pretty much wet and I know I'm not going to kill this food ball. Whereas a white paint pen, you really, you really should wait for your paints to dry before you hit your, get your paint pens out. I was working on one of those pages that I made yesterday and wrote on it with a yellow paint pen only to write over some gel medium. And then I was like, oh, Dina. Why'd you do that? So I guess this is the stencil for you if you like cats. <laughs> if you don't like cats, then this is not the stencil for you. Um, no, it does not come in other tip sizes. That's one of the unique things about it. It comes like it comes. It's a like a 1.5, no, yep, it's a 1.5 ball. So, uh, so it doesn't. Um, Ranger, Alan from Ranger called the Food A Ball company once and asked them if they made that pen in white. And they said they did not. And he was like, well, that's a mistake. <laughs> because honestly, if that pen came in white, White, you know, and everybody will say, I love the Uniball Signo. The Uniball Signo is a really, really good white pen. It doesn't work for me because my, oh, Dina, because my paints are so thick and often on there a lot. So I think the Uniball Signo is a great pen if you are 
using ink or um, matte paint, flat paint. For me, it's not the best choice. I just, I've, I have the best luck with paint pens because um, paint writes on paint. So if I've got a painted background, then wouldn't it make sense for um, paint to write on it, right? Diane hates, I mentioned this before, but I know that Diane hates the food I have all pen. She really hates it, which is fine. You know, I always say pens and brushes are personal and you like what you like and there's that's fine we uh, you know i like heavy body paint and i you know we're all going to have our own personal preferences for art materials and i personally love the food a ball it rocks rocks for what i need it to do and then you can make these as zombie as you want to make them, right? They can be a city zombie. I can keep stenciling. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stencil. I'm gonna mask some. <laughs> Why? I don't know, but this one's gonna get some vines on his head, her head. Maybe I should change my color there just a tad. Every cat needs a vine growing up its head. Why not? Um, I mentioned yesterday the importance of having that adventurous, oh, let's try that spirit. I really think that's true, especially when you get something new. Um, also, make sure that you, oh, looks like he has a face tattoo. Aww. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, they can have some pupils. Um, now, the thing about a cat pupil, though, is it's different shapes, right? It can, it can be round. It can be a pointy shape depending on what they're looking at in their light and how mad they are at you. Oh, I, ha I was telling a story I had a point. Oh, uh, that it's, you know, that, that creative spirit, if you guys will just really embrace that, I think um, your art will just benefit from it. Don't wait for me to show you something Experiment, try, and then share it with the world. Sometimes you don't even know what to try. I just start by spilling stuff, right? That's what I like. I always say I've, I've made a whole career. Oops, no response. Puffer go fish. Kind of creepy. Okay, yeah, you can think it's creepy. I don't care. Doesn't bother me. Remember, if I'm looking down, probably not seeing comments go by. And I'll try to scroll back to see them. But it's easier if later you repeat them for me. Oh, I like my green creepy kitties. Another brush. La, 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 la. There's a gal that used to take my classes all the time when I taught at the Occasional Artist down in downtown Glendale before it closed. Her name is Freddie. She's awesome. And Freddie, her favorite color combo was purple and green. And so this com totally makes me think of her because she was... And she was so good at purple and green, too. Like, everything she did, it just reminded me of, like, spring flowers, like pansies. She just, it was her deal. She embraced it. And it was really fun. This is like a, this is like a really big-shouldered kitty, apparently. Alrighty. 
I know. I was sad when they closed too. Kathy just, her grandbabies were getting bigger and that, so the, Kathy who owned the occasional artist. Um, that was such a fun store because it was unique in that she did a lot of, she, her focus was book binding. She, I mean, she had rubber stamps and stuff like that as well. But she's such a good, amazing bookbinder. I mean, she made books that I wouldn't even attempt to do just because of the, the measuring required. And she would do like Book of the Month Club and, you know, Lime Kitties. This one's my favorite for some reason, this little guy. <laughs> he just makes me happy down there. I don't know why. I like him. do a little stenciling on that page and then we're gonna call that one done for now. Sound good? Let's see. So not my usual colors and it's kind of fun to kind of fun to play <laughs> kind of like it I think it needs some speckle because you know um, the reason I love to speckle things is not just to torture you all but I really like the color pop that it gives and it's just a really easy way to add a contrast without having to add another overpowering layer if you're not sure where to put it. Remember speckling too is the great unifier. So if you speckle something, it touches a little of everything and it, it, it serves to unify. So just a fun, it's just fun to play, right? All right, let's do some gloss spray. I know I should give him big, big whiskers because you know who has giant whiskers is my cat Titan Buff. So Titan, he is hilarious. Okay, I lost my pen. <laughs> So he has got the biggest whiskers on the planet. And he, I, honestly, I've been, need, I've been wanting to measure him, but he's really hard to get close to. Um, he's just like so attention uh, deficit, but yeah. Yep, yeah, you can always whisker him. Cute kitty. Okay, one idea, right? Use your paints. Another idea, let's play around with the spray. The spray is instant gratification when it comes to masking. And let's see. I dug out, you guys, these are my last giant tags. This is it. After this, I have no more. Okay, what my, what did I do with the little mask, you guys? <laughs> oh, have mercy. Luckily, see this is another reason I have multiples of everything. It's because I lose everything. Oh shoot, I just have multiples of the big guy. Anybody? Oh, I see. <laughs> All right, so. Let's spray, and if you wanted to give the head a color first, you could. Um, actually, let's spray over a tag that has something on it so that we've got a little interest coming through. Let's see. A lot of these tags are incredibly dense. Let's turn over to my... My box of tricks. used most of them so let's cannibalize this I had a few questions about cannibalizing things and what I mean by that what I mean is I'll take projects I'll take pages I'll take books I'll take old you know journals that are full and then do things like that 
and I rip out, and I rip, rip it up. Were any of you in this class? <laughs> this was a book we made. It's a fun book. La, 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 la. All right, so now I've got a few options for putting some background on these tags. I don't have a, um, I don't have a tag that's already painted suitably for what I know that it needs to be. So let's just collage a bit on there. So look, instant backgrounds. I love that. Diane and I did a, a very impromptu live Instagram again yesterday. So it's probably still on my stories um, until, let's see, we did it, we started it at about, um, hi Jen, uh, we started it at about 12.30 or 1 p.m. Arizona time, which is Pacific time right now, yesterday, and um, so that means about that same time today, it's going to go bye-bye, okay? So, but we... Um, I had a point. <laughs> I think we were talking about what makes us similar and what makes us different. We were answering questions. And one of the things that makes us similar is we both have a similar process. She's not as, she's not as, um, losing stuff like I do and all that craziness, but she definitely is very free and experimental and does all that super fun stuff. All right. So let's see how this turns out. It might be bad. Nah might be good so that Kim that's how I've been wearing my hair is mostly in the that little ponytail other because otherwise what happens is I really want to cut my bangs let's let that dry and then I can outline it I kind of love it remember if you have low standards you'll like everything you do so what I didn't do very well that time is move my hand which I've always lecture you guys about and then I didn't do it so remember to get the best, oh, you know what? That's because there's paint inside there. <laughs> Oops. Uh, to get the best results from masking with gloss spray, this is not a fine mist like dilutions will be. You have to move your wrist and don't overspray, okay? And then I'll have better luck. Oh, it's like guardian angel kitties. Oop, I totally gave him uh, more color. I love it. And then I can come back and let's see. My paper towels. I'm just going to blot that real quick so that I can spray again and give that a funky pop. I think this one's sort of a fail. Yeah. I think the background was too dense. Oh, I don't know though. Look at that part. Look at that. Look at that just whispering through. I don't know. I don't think it's a fail. Now I kind of super dig it. All right, I'm setting that aside just to dry for a second. See how this one dries, look. He's so cute. I love him. Remember, lower your standards and it works out fine. Aw. I seriously kind of love him. I have to say, he's, he's imperfect. I love imperfection. I do. I, it just makes me so incredibly happy. I think um, just because I'm not a very good perfectionist. I mean, if I were, then I might care more. But I'm really not good at perfection. So I, I, I would never you know, tell you that you have to be a hot mess like me. And if you are a perfectionist, that's good. We need perfectionists, perfectionists in this world. Um, because I need to hire you to... Uh, do you know be my banker and my accountant and uh also i need to hire you to uh help it in all the ways that i can't help myself right so it's really important that there are perfectionists in this world i'm just sadly not one of them all right so a little speckle in the background little magenta gloss spray oh he's so cute I think I can get a, a really good print off this because there's plenty of spray there. So let me 
pull a print off of those. What did I do with my last few tags? Did I already use them all? La 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 la. Alright. We're gonna use cardstock. It does look like a birthday cake. Ooh, those are creepy. Hey, I super love the print that I got off the craft sheet, though. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, those might be, we might be able to use those later. We'll see. All right, let's go back to this one. It's amazing how the gloss spray really does dry quickly. Remember that gloss spray, because it's acrylic, you are going to get this really cool um, drying time. A good drying, you know, quick drying time. Acrylics in general are um, fast drying. And so you're going to get these drying for you. Not, you know, it's not going to be killer, killer long, even if you live somewhere humid. Evil kitty looking at you. I kind of love it. Or you can always lay it back down and go um, go over it again. Or you can be at peace with whatever happens. Yeah, this is a mask of mine, yeah. You can be at peace with it. I had the worst dreams last night, you guys. I'm not gonna, I won't bother telling you my dreams, but they sucked. Do you ever wake up exhausted? how I feel today and why does my family have to eat every day I mean really can't they just live on reserves for a day can't I live on reserves for a day <sighs> I wish so now I'm taking a Posca pen and I'm adding a few white highlights to this image that I managed to spray over completely Right. I'm just gonna prime the pen a little bit. Looks like I may have used that one to write on something I shouldn't have. I know that you're all dying of shock over that. I know. I always say I've got plenty of food storage. It's just located in my gut, in my butt. If only I could just use that. That would be amazing. Instead, I want to stress eat. I, I wish I was a stress exerciser. Sadly, I'm not a stress exerciser. It would be a much more healthy habit than bread. And the thing is, is I have been working on cutting that down and controlling it, so think how much worse it would be if I think I might turn into a loaf of bread. My whole head would, would be bread soon. <laughs> bread just tastes so good. So I'm just adding speckle to brighten it up. It's just moody and dark and really kind of funky cool. I think it needs a white quote. What do you guys think? La, 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 la. Look, there's one right there already on the piece I tore up. So what I would do with this when I'm done messing around with it, is I totally would put it in my journal. It would just go right there. Go in the journal. Remember, if your background's dark, then you need to put light things on it for contrast. And if your background's light, you can put dark things on it for contrast. You wanna flip that contrast around. I love sourdough. I, lo I just love bread. It really is one of my favorite foods. It really is. If you've ever seen Scott Pilgrim versus the world, it's kind of a silly movie, but there's a few lines in that movie that we quote all the time. And one of them, the kid was vegan. And the, his friend said, you're not vegan, you were eating chicken. And the kid goes, chicken's not vegan? So we say that all the time. Chicken's not vegan. And then another kid was like, 
uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really toning down and losing weight. And then the other guy was like, yeah, but you're, you're always eating bread. And he was like, bread makes you fat. Nothing makes you fat except calorie excess. So I, I'm a firm believer you can still eat bread. And if you're fat, so what? I'm fat. I'm fat. My weight goes up, my weight goes down. And that's okay. That is okay. Right? It is what it is. I like my speckly craziness. I don't know if you can see it really well. But on a light color page, and maybe with another focal point, um, I think this one's super dark. And so if I can find this image again, but not dark, and so then repeat that image, I think that'd be really cool. All right, I'm setting that aside to dry. I'm turning back to crazy this crazy kitty. I had a gal message me once because I made a comment about gaining weight in the pandemic and she said I was being um, fat phobic and I felt really bad about it because I, I I'm, I'm not fat phobic I'm fat I can understand why it would come across that way um, basically I was commenting on my own issues right of not being able to uh, be in control and so really commenting about eating is is really a, a, uh, I think it is a symptom of the bigger picture right um, the bigger picture being there's so much we don't know and there's so you know what I mean like so if I ever offend any of you you're welcome to email me and tell me <laughs> Because people do. Um, but just so you know, I I would never do it intentionally. If that makes sense. I never want to make any of you feel bad. I really wouldn't. All right, so I'm just kind of adding extra lines to eyes here. So they're not quite so flat. Right? And then this kitty, which ended up really oversprayed and kind of ridiculous, once everything's dry, it will give you a new perspective on him. And you'll find that you get in there with a little bit of pen work. Don't tell Diane that it's doodling. Just tell Diane that it's uh, drawing. Um, D Barb, when will you... Um, Tell us about the live class when I get my ducks in a row over that live class. I just haven't got my ducks in a row over it yet. So soon, soon, soon. Diane wanted me to get it done yesterday, but I didn't. <laughs> I, so, you know, again, it, I'm somebody too that goes to bed and then I think, oh, I should have done this and this and this. And I saw a quote on Pinterest that said something like, your your worth is not defined your by your productivity. And that one hit me hard because I do sort of define my worth by my productivity. I really do. I beat myself up. I no, the class is not abstract figures. Nope. There's already a class about abstract figures on my website. It is um, called figuratively speaking, and it, there's like. Six hours of video, uh, four hours of video, excuse me. Carolyn, I'm not sure what time class will be. Probably about the same time as demo so that we can make sure we hit our friends over the pond as well. Okay. I think my ducks left. Yep, cat, cat, the cat mask, I believe, is still available. I hope so, because this was a request. I, if Kelly's on, Kelly can uh, mention. I like, too, that it's kind of curling up from the moisture, and so you're getting some interesting dimension happening there when I did that you gotta admit you probably thought that was ruined right I bet you did I bet you did now I love it and I bet you thought this was ruined too some of you might still think it is and if you do that's fine but on something colorful uh, I, yeah, I'm gonna cut it down 
because I want more of the page in the background to show. So this part is gonna go bye-bye. So you guys, this is exactly how I work. I make these decisions on the fly and I'll think, okay, that turned out dark. So it needs something light. Okay, that needs to be smaller because the background will brighten it up. And you just play. It's kind of cool on the, on the denim too though. Don't you think? I don't think it's terrible. So I, I love to tell a story. Uh, I'm just gonna staple that because it's moving around. Um, so my, I think, and I know I've told this in the demos before, but so if you're new to me, my hairdresser is a friend of mine. She she's awesome, and she she cut my hair once, and and we were actually trying to dye it lavender. Well, it didn't work at all. And as she washed the dye out, she was drying it, you know, and she goes, "Well, it's not hideous." And so that is uh, one of our one of our jokes now is, you know, even and I often think about that even when I look at this page, I'm like, you know, it's not hideous. <laughs> and you know, if that's what your standards are, then so be it. Okay, what did I just drop? I think I dropped some glue. So when I say I can't find my glue, you guys can tell me that it is on the floor. My desk is really small and I'm just, yeah. I also don't put things away properly. There we go. That's kind of cool. It's moody and interesting. And it and this quote was art is freedom and sanctuary and bliss. And it's kind of like they're coming out from the darkness into the light, right? Isn't that cool? Sometimes I'll make stuff and I'll find out, I realize what it means later. And sometimes it means nothing. So when you, when you try something and it doesn't turn out initially and you think, oh, shoot, you need to do what I do, which is, which is instead of saying, oh, shoot, you need to say, oh, cool, and then set it aside, give it a little bit of dry time. Give yourself a little bit of space away from it. Whatever you've just done, often it's a messy layer, so then that needs to calm itself down. And then once it, once it started to dry a little bit, you can come back to it and evaluate it again. Um, and you know, like I said, I have a million ways to fix things and you just saw a couple of them, right? An outline is a fix. Yeah. Just play, 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 play and lower your standards and then it's way more fun. All right. Did that help with the cat masks? I hope so. I hope Maria saw that. They're cute. Didn't I do some more others? I've already lost them. I've already lost them, y'all. Oh, yeah. It was a page. Anyway, cool. We got the lime kitties. Right? I think he needs more words. I'm going to fill his body. I'm going to fill bodies in with words. I think that would be awesome. Right? So there's my lime kitties. Lowering standards is, liber is liberating. In fact, I have... This little sign on my desk that I think I bought it at Marshall's. Well, it's not on my desk, but it's on my shelf by my books. And it says low expectations. And I, this just makes me laugh so hard because that's, you know, I do, I have high expectations for myself in general, but in art, I don't. So I always say I'm really hard on myself in most aspects of my life. Well, apparently not hard enough with the bread and the exercise because I hate exercising. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Um, but, anywho, uh, <laughs> but I, I, I do have, I have high expectations for my productivity, I guess I would say. But I do have low expectations for my artwork. You know, eh, it's fine. Because it's an opportunity. Even those, you know, oh, that didn't work how I planned things. Is, it's an opportunity to learn to fix or to try something else or you know and that's another reason why I love working on inexpensive materials like tags paper even if you look at a journal a journal's not that expensive for how many pieces of paper you get so you know journals to me are safe they're a safe place to play nobody else needs to see it right so all the principles that I just did apply to all of the masks that I've done um, this one seems to be super popular, and I do love it. I've used it a lot as well. And one of my favorite things to do with this mask is 
to use it with, with pastel colors. So instead of doing the typical mask thing, which is where you are always going to, you know, have something crazy and then you mask over it to tone it down. If you start with pastels, it makes for a really pretty effect. It's not gonna be as bold in your face. It's definitely a background effect, but it's pretty fun. So I'm just pulling out some pastel colors that are in my line. So what I grabbed just because they were on the top of the pile <laughs> is Buff, um, Heather, Carnation, Aloe, and Elephant. Elephant is a light warm gray. And I'm just gonna grab a page, find something to mask on. I often do this in my small journals. This is what I was working on yesterday or this morning. Do you remember that from yesterday? So I added another focal point brighter to stand out from the background and then added text in the background. Then I added these kind of limey, yellowy pops as well. So that's what I was playing around with this morning. All right, let's find, let's see if I've got something swiped to mask on. Yeah, let's just do it on a white page. We're gonna do it on a small journal today. That's code for Dina looked down on the floor and does not immediately see a white journal. So therefore we're not gonna do a white journal. We're gonna do this page right here. Perfect, perfect. Um, I know a lot of you guys use pixie spray to keep your stencils down. Um, I, I don't because I'm lazy. And the easiest way for me to keep a stencil down or a mask down when I'm using it is this. <laughs> I just hold it down. Just hold it. Oh my gosh, everything I'm gonna make today is gonna have to have lime and blackberry in it because I've got so much on my desk. All right, so what I'm gonna do is start with the pastels and layer few colors in the pastel. This is carnation. And if it's not perfect, the perfect police will come and get you. No, I'm kidding. I, I can't do it perfectly even if I try, so don't worry about it a whole lot. We're gonna we're gonna be doing lots of different layers of this, so it doesn't really matter. If something turns out bad initially, <laughs> worry about it later when you do your next layer. Or don't worry about it at all. Just kind of what I preach, right? Again, the key to masking is don't overload your foam. Too much medium means seepage, user error. Okay, the name of this mask is, I have no idea. Um, um, uh, vine, scribbly, uh, branches masks, maybe? Branches masks? I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Half the time I, I have to look up what I name things, and I do name them. I have to look it up on Ranger's website. <laughs> I remember um, color names, of course, really easily. Some stamp sets I remember, but eventually I get to the point where I, I just don't remember what I've named things. All right, so now I have Heather on my the same blending tool that I used before. I didn't change it out. And I'm just overlapping and doing another series of vines slightly overlapped the others, making sure that I'm not just kind of doing isolated images, meaning as I did one purple vine, I'm now doing another purple vine over here and I'm making sure my purples connect to each other. I'm not leaving a gap in between the purple. So in that sense, when you do this sort of thing, you do have to be willing to, to lose a high percentage of that, back, of that initial run, but it's still going to show through, right? Okay, I think that's good. Let's turn to elephant. So it's just a really subtle, thank you, Caroline, branches, branches, stencil, and mask, something like that. Thank you, thank you. So now I've got elephant, and again, lather, rinse, repeat, right? So you're going to get the feeling of standing in a garden And because we're using light colors, it's very background feeling. It's nothing's be going to become incredibly focal. Okay, 
is that? Yeah. Oops. <laughs> oh, Dina. Oh, there it is. I'm like, I just used Elfin. Why can't I find it? There we go. This page did not have gesso on it. This would be so much easier if I had gesso this page, you guys. Um, the paint is soaking up something fierce because that there's no gesso layer. And so I'm actually having to work a lot harder to get this, this shape masked. And if I didn't have to work this hard, or I, if I had gessoed, I wouldn't have to work this hard to get it, to get it masked. It just wouldn't be as hard. It'd be much easier. All right, so after I have layered these over and over, you've got just these impressions of vines coming through, okay? And then I love to turn to the stencil portion. Oh, that was great. Good job, Dina. Woohoo! Then I want to turn to the stencil portion of this mask, and then I want to put some of the positive shape in there. And let's see. I want to set a timer. We'll see if I can find it. It's one of my most used uh, imagery sets. These, uh, these scribbly branches and stuff like that. And so I tend to use it a lot. Did you know? Let me give you a life tip. This is life hack. I hate that term, by the way. Um, if you put stuff away, you can find it again. <laughs> I just choked on my own snort. And if you don't put stuff away, you might not be able to find it. What? Oh, I can't tell you how many times they've sent me stuff. Ranger will send me stuff to test prototypes. And so I'll have it. I'll test it. I'll prove it. And then when it comes time to actually make samples from the stuff that I have played with, I cannot find it again. And so then I have to have Kathy from Ranger or Patty send me another set and I always feel really guilty because it's not like we get unlimited sets at the beginning. They're all prototypes. Okay, I can't find it, y'all. Okay. Pivot. So I can't find it. So we're going to give it a different focal. Sound good? Just going to close in some of the edges a little bit. And because I can't find it, let's do reverse masking. So if I do reverse masking on this, what it's going to give me is, um, it's still gonna give me the positive shape, but it won't be quite as distinct as if we were able to, if I was able to locate the actual mask or stencil bit. All right. So what I did is I put buff paint and I'm putting it on pretty thick. And this would work better if I had gessoed, but we'll do our best, right? So now I've got a pretty thick layer of buff paint there, okay? And then I'm gonna lay the mask down. So I did this back when I we talked about our acrylic paint techniques. Don't know if you guys remember that or not. I'm gonna find one of my completely dry baby wipes. And I have to re-wet it just a bit by sticking it in my paint water. And then by holding the mask down, so instead of painting around it, what I'm doing is I'm removing all the paint that's around it. And when I remove that mask, I'm gonna be left with the positive shape. We'll see if this color, uh, I don't know if it's quite, oh yeah, you can see it. I think I need to move to a darker color though. Let's use blushing. Can you see it on there? It's pretty cool. I love to play with the positive and the negative of the shapes. It just makes me happy. So again, put your paint on thick, take your baby wipe, do your best to hold the mask down. I'd be getting a lot better removal of, the, of this color if I had gessoed, like I said. I always say that um, gesso a lot of techniques I do are gesso dependent. So like just throw in a swipe of color on a background, that's not gesso dependent really. But stuff stuff that's a little more involved, um, it definitely is. 
And so, see that didn't want to remove. Mm -hmm. Because why? Not enough gesso on the background. Basically, my basically here's my point. My blushing soaked into that background, right? So now let's try it again. So now I've got more of a plastic um, foundation because that blushing is going to give me not really not won't be the same as gesso, but it will. Um, it is adding to the layer of plastic down there. So do over. And this is really common for when I play around. Um, you know, stuff that I've even done in the past, I'm like, oh, it didn't work on there. Okay, well, try again. Or, oh, I know why I didn't do that didn't work. There's no gesso. Or, you know, see what I'm saying? Like, there's always, there's always a reason. Um, see, because, so this reverse masking, that's very typical of how reverse masking will look. Because it just won't look um, totally perfect because the mask is slipping and sliding around while you paint around it. And, but I'm still getting this really pretty halo happening of the shape. The bigger the mask too, the harder it is to do it. If you just have a simpler mask, it's much easier. But why be simple, right? Eventually your baby wipe gets really loaded with paint because you are removing paint there. So I'm going to swap to another one. Is it just Arizona where baby wipes dry out and you have to add water or do you guys have to add water to them too? Even if the packages are closed, they dry out. All right, so if you can see, I'll hold it up. And now I've got these really subtle positive shapes from that mask. Isn't that cool? Blackberry would become immediately dominant, and I want this to stay nice and light. It's really pretty, though. You can see the stenciling, or the, the original masking in the background that's layered over each other, and then you see those positive shapes happening on the top. And it's just a lovely effect. And I so sometimes I really think that, you know, masking, the go-to for masking is night or black, right? It Anytime you want to cover something up, and re reduction, reduce something, reduce the chaos of something. Night paint and a mask is the way to go because it, it instantly fixes everything. But remember, you can use your masks with a different color palette and get it, you know, get use the same techniques almost to get really pretty results as well. If that makes sense. All right, questions. I haven't looked at questions forever. So yeah, you could use black gesso. How would you incorporate the matching rubber stamp into the background? So I probably would. Find a piece of paper. Oh, okay, Kathy, now you're uh, requ not requiring, requesting that I uh, be able to find said stamp. <laughs> oh. And I found it. It's a Christmas miracle. All right. So here's the matching rubber stamp, and I'm going to stamp it just in black, black archival. You can tell this is a well-used stamp. I also keep my archival pads really juicy. I re-ink them a lot. All of your stores can get re-inkers for you, especially in Arizona. I don't buy ink pads without re-inkers. <laughs> if you can't get a re-inker, I don't want that ink pad. So I'm gonna stamp. I'd probably stamp more than one to be fair, but. Let's quickly cut it out. Oh look, there's one there from the book originally. Sweet, even better. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. Uh, well, all right, too late. Get started. I have a story about cutting. Do you guys wanna hear it? Half of you have heard it already. So I was in a class that Tim was teaching and we had to cut out these ornaments and I did mine because I'm a really quick cutter. And Tim walked around, looked at the table, and he looked at what I did, kept walking. And he goes to, and apparently he says this in a lot of classes, but it was just so funny because he had just looked at my cutouts that I did. And I'm sitting there, you know, I mean, I was done far before the people at my table who were Wendy and Diane. 
And so Tim goes to the class. So if there's someone at your table that's done, you might want to uh, have them help you cut out, but you might want to look at their work first. <laughs> so I've had other people tell me, oh yeah, he'll often say that, but it was so funny because he had just inspected my cutting. So I turned to Diane and I said, so Di, do you want help? She was like, no, thank you. <laughs> and I turned to Wendy and I'm like, Wendy, do you want help? Mm, no, thank you. I just thought it was so funny that they, neither of them, wanted me to uh, help them with their pieces, with their cutting. I just think it's hilarious. Hilarious. La 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 la. So repetition is a good thing, remember? Anytime you can repeat imagery, then it makes your piece stronger. And a background is meant to be a background. Don't fall in love with it. If you don't, if you've if you've made a piece and you're not and you're not willing to cover it up, it's not a background. What it is is your finished art and you're done. Step away. Look, I cannibalized that other book and I even got focal points out of it. How cool is that? That that is why cannibalizing. <laughs> Your work is incredibly helpful, I think. It's, it's just so that you don't have to start from scratch. And I mean, I made that book in class ages ago. And the thing is, am I really ever going to do anything with that book? I ha obviously haven't given it away and made somebody's day, which is what I should have done with it, but I hadn't. It was in my drawer and it's just sitting there taking up space. Um, and now it has a new life by... Uh, adding, you know, repurposing the imagery and the layers and the textures. A fly doesn't really make sense there. <laughs> so this, at this point is when I would start digging through my piles that are next to me, seeing what I have nearby that might work. I have those, remember I've used those a couple of times. Oh my gosh, you guys, look what I was doing with gloss spray the other day. Do you want to snog that? Seriously, look at those. They're incredible. Gloss spray and backwards letters. So good, so good. All right, let's use these as well. La 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 la. That's nice and the color uh, helps to pop a little bit because there's a lot of pinks and purples happening in that background. I'm just using ultra thick gel medium. I think one's enough personally. I think words would be really good. So I can use tissue words. I'm digging around to see if I have anything stamped. Oh, here we go. Break the rules. Perfect. Snog means make out. Remember I lived in England when I was a kid. Ages 12 to 15 is when I lived in England. And uh, because we were, my dad worked for Dow, we went to a British school. We weren't on the, people always assume we were military, went to the military air base and stuff like that. Oh no, we were in a little village in Norfolk County, UK, called Terrington St. Clement. That's where we lived. Okay. So, I promise I'm done blabbing. There are things you don't destroy to make something new. There is no rule. I destroy whatever I feel like. There is no... Uh, as an English major, how did you become okay with tearing into bound books? Have you ever been to one of those giant sales where they can't really get rid of books for 25 cents? There's so many books out there that are, that are destined for the landfill. So many. I don't... I don't tear up um like books that would be worth some money or, or something like that but guys and you don't need to tear up a vintage book because by the time I've torn it up glued it in something and painted it with bright colors it does it doesn't matter if the paper's vintage or not so it doesn't have to be vintage number one um but really there's millions of books out there that are going to end up in landfills millions so no big whoop right I think it's not they're not sacred to me in a way um, 
Let's see, anything else? Anyone else? How is Wendy? I think she's good. I spray water into the baby wipe. Yeah, you could, that's a good idea. Remoist them before you shut it. You lost your squoble stencil. I know, I have multiples of that one because when I lose squoble, my life is just over. And so, journals. Okay, here's the deal with pre-gessoed anything. The gesso that they would use, somebody asks, is there a pre-gessoed journal? The dealio is pre-gesso that they're gonna apply in a factory is going to be some sort of propelled sprayed gesso. There's not gonna be somebody there with a brush applying traditional gesso. It's gonna be um, something that they can do efficiently and quickly, and it would probably be this, like, it all would almost be like spray paint. And gesso applied that way, and with that sort of, um, gosh, uh, with that sort of solvent-based product, sucks. So if I ever buy canvas, and it says that it's pre-gessoed, I don't believe it. I always add another layer of gesso to it because gesso that you apply with your own hand, number one, is you're gonna have the hand of the artist in the background already, which which I like. And number two, if, you, if you've ever bought a canvas that was supposedly pre-gessoed and then you start to paint on it and your paint kind of beads up, it sucks. So don't believe anything that's pre-gessoed, which is why journals don't need to be pre-gessoed, you guys. Just turn on your Netflix, um, turn on your podcasts and just gesso as you go, uh, yeah, gesso in advance. Uh, or, and maybe you're not a gesso girl. That's okay. Yep. Details will be slathered on the class all over my social media. So you'll, if you follow me, remember to just clicking follow on someone is not, um, enough to see everything they post. So Facebook has all of these little algorithms. So like I have 19,000 something fans on Art of Dina Wakely page, but I'll post something and it will say that it showed it to 700 of you. So if you don't purposely go to your groups, this happens, this is true on Instagram too, and say follow, show me everything, you won't see everything. If, unless you purposely go, oh, let's see what's, let's see what's new in the group that the algorithm might not have showed to me. And the, the, the reason why is they want me to pay, right? So they're showing my post to 700 of you out of 19,000 because they want me to pay to boost the post or do an ad or something like that. So that's just how social media works. So yeah, ducks, that's on my list to do today. Um, I realize that has a high priority. Um, and so I'm hoping to get that done next. If you gesso the whole journal to prepare all the pages and you want to use black gesso later, will it just go over the white? Okay, yep, it sure will. You can just, or, or, and if you want to do some black, some white, that's kind of fun. And I'm a bad gessoer. I don't go to edges. I, you know, I slap it on, watch some TV, turn the page. Well, I do like five or six journals at a time. Um, I've been bad at about pre-gessoing lately. And so it really, sometimes like this page, I, that, that would have been, the reverse masking would have been easier had I pre-gessoed. So it's so a good, good example of why it's helpful. I appreciate so much all of you guys trusting me with your time and popping over to say hello. You guys take care of yourself as well, for sure. I'm hiding in the studio from my kids. <laughs> Remember a couple weeks ago, I'm like, oh, I can't wait for them to come home. Now I'm like, oh man, <laughs> why do they need food every night? <laughs> Seriously. Appreciate you guys. Use your masks, use them, use them. If you've bought the kitty and don't know how to use it, I hope that gave you some ideas. And if you don't have the kitty, do those exact same techniques just with the masks that you do have, if that makes sense. All of the techniques are um, mix, mix and match. It, you, can, you can change the mask, you can change the stencil, you can change the stamp. All of it can be shaken up in a Yahtzee cup, spilled out in different combinations. And please, please, please remember, hashtag Dina Wakely Media, hashtag Ranger Inc. Um, post in the Dina Wakely Media Kindred uh, Artists group as well, because we can see what's going on there. And that would be fantastic. And thank you guys for supporting each other, for being a lovely, supportive, sweet, kind community. And I, thanks for being a fan. Thanks for using my stuff. 
Yeah, I do teach them to cook. They're just bad at the clean-up part, which I also teach them to do. I've always been one that didn't do chores for my boys. You know, done is better than perfect, even with chores, so... Yeah, but still. Appreciate you guys. Have an awesome... What day is today? Tuesday. <laughs> Appreciate you all. Mucho! Bye, guys!